Hey everybody, welcome back to our midweek study here at First Norfolk. I'm so excited to get into this this week with you all. So if you don't mind, go ahead and turn in your copies of scripture to Colossians 3 verses 1 through 4. Uh, We're going to be starting up a mini-series for this week and for next week on what it means to have a being heavenly set, to have a heaven-set mind and a heaven-set life. And so this week we're talking about what it means to have a heaven-set mind. And while you guys are turning to your copies of Scripture, um, and are turning in your copies of Scripture, excuse me, uh, I want to talk to you guys about March Madness. Many of you have probably heard of March Madness before, uh, and if you haven't, March Madness is this time of the year in the sports world where college athletes playing basketball, whether men and women, are competing for the title of national champion. And it's the top 64 teams within the Division I college basketball world. Now, the cool thing about watching March Madness is you see Cinderella stories of these underdog schools winning games that should never win, or these dominant schools making their way through the, t- uh, the tournament with no problem whatsoever. But what's unique about it is that all of these athletes, both men and women, have been striving for this title national champion all year round. Their minds have been focused and their gaze has been set on bringing home that trophy to their school. And this is a dream they've had for their entire life most of the time. They are focused on bringing home the national championship and their efforts are solely set into that. They never walked into this tournament uh, passively thinking about it, but they have been training hard for this. And it has been the apple of their eye and their gaze of their mind. In the Christian life, as we are followers of Jesus, we are called to have a heaven-set mind as we are looking towards our citizenship in heaven. As Jesus has given us citizenship in heaven, we are called to gaze upon that. And today in our passage of scripture, we find that as followers of Jesus, we are called to keep our minds set upon his heavenly rule. His kingdom should be the apple of our mind and nothing should step inside of that view. So read with me here in Colossians chapter three. And it says, starting in verse one, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are not above, not on things uh, that are on earth. Uh, For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So Paul is writing this letter to the church in Colossae. And what we're coming up on in this passage is what I consider the climax of the book. Uh, To this point, he has been talking to the people of Colossae about what it means to be a follower of Jesus and to be alive in their relationship with God and that Jesus has given them new life in him. And as followers, of belie- as followers of Jesus today, we experience that new life through Jesus' work on the cross and his sacrifice. And so as we are keeping our minds on Jesus and his heavenly rule, we must let Jesus be our focus. And that is our first point for today, to let Jesus be your focus. As followers of Jesus, we know we've been given a new life. And in this new life, uh, Jesus is the center of everything. If you look at that first verse here in chapter three, Paul says, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above. You see, Christ is seated at the right hand of God. When we believe in Jesus, when we have repented of our sins and are focused on Jesus, we are followers of Jesus. We must understand that we have been raised into a new life just as he was raised from the dead. You see, Jesus defeated the power of sin and death. And in that, he is bringing us into new life with him. We are not uh, a person who is turning from something and decides to add Jesus into their life. No, we are given a brand new life in Jesus Christ himself. And through that life, we get to experience citizenship in heaven with God, with Jesus, with all of the saints who from past, present, and future. And so we must focus on the one who has given us that life while we are on this side of heaven. We are called to focus on Jesus. You see, because Paul tells us in verse two to set our minds that are on things that are above, not on this earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When we follow Jesus, we are putting our entire life in him. He is not taking an aspect of who we are but instead is making us a brand new creation. He is giving us a life that we have never known and could never know without him. 
We are given relationship with God. When Jesus is our focus, we begin to see the beauty of heaven itself. We see the beauty of the presence of God. We are called to focus on God's presence in our life. And through Jesus' death and resurrection, when we are brought into that new life with Jesus, that our sin, our bodies, our flesh is put to death and our spirits are raised anew with Jesus himself. Jesus has taken away our certificate of debt. We have a debt owed to sin uh, naturally in this world. We live in a world that is opposite to God's design. You see, God designed us for relationship with him. But when sin entered the picture and man rebelled against God, the relationship was torn. You see, because God cannot exist with sin. And in the same way, when we have sin in our life, we cannot exist with God. We cannot reach God and have relationship with sin in our life. But Jesus takes that sin from us. Through his death on the cross, he paid the price for our sins, taking the wrath of God. And we exist in new life with him. And so in return, when we experience that new life with Jesus and we are focused on Jesus, we give him his full honor in our life. We honor the name of Jesus. We honor the person of Jesus. We praise God for this life we have in him. You see, to praise God doesn't mean that we gather on a, just a Sunday morning to sing worship songs together and to hear the teaching of God's word together. But instead, it means to take every moment of our life and giving thanks to God for that. To bring praise to God is to trust him with every moment of our lives and depend fully upon him and his redeeming strength to rescue us. And also a part of praising God in our life is leaving behind the sin in our life. As we experience new life in Jesus Christ, we no longer are bound by sin. We no longer should obey sin, to walk in sin, but instead we should be so focused on Jesus with a heavenly mindset that we want to obey him. You see, as followers of Jesus and in this new life we have, this earth is not our home. Scripture tells us in 1 Peter that we are sojourners, that we are travelers through this world. That while we are on this side of heaven, while we are on earth, we are simply traveling through this land as visitors. We're no longer uh, people who, are, uh, who see this place as their home. Our home is now heaven. Our home is with the full presence of God. We are to bask in the glory of God and bask in the glory of heaven where sin is no longer in the picture. You see, because God has no sin. God does not exist with sin. God opposes sin in his holiness. And we get to focus fully on that. And so we cannot become disillusioned with this world. We should not, or we should become disillusioned with this world, I should say. Our gaze should be so uh, fully set upon Jesus as our Lord and Savior that everything in this world is a distraction that shouldn't take our attention away from him. You see, because this world is fallen, this world exists with sin, uh, it is easy to become distracted with what is going on. Even with how I brought up March Madness, it is easy for me to set my focus upon March Madness and not upon God in this time. It's easy for me to get so wrapped up in my bracket uh, of figuring out who was going to win, choosing the winners, and I get so focused on that that I get distracted of who Jesus is. But friends, I am called by Jesus not to focus so much on that that I forget who he is. You see, because even though we're sojourners in this world and we're called to be a light in this world, we're not called to be a part of this world. We don't live by the same standard of this world. And so when we get distracted with what the world offers and what with sin offers, we get distracted on things that oppose God and his rule and, his, uh, and that pull us away from obeying the Father and obeying Jesus in a, st a walking step in step with the Holy Spirit. We are distracted. 
And that distraction no longer gives us a heaven mindset. And when we lose a heaven mindset, we lose sight of what our purpose is. You see, because as followers of Jesus, our purpose is to bring glory to God. And the best way we know how to do that is to obey his command, but also to show his love to others, to spread the gospel, to show others the truth of who Jesus is. You see, when we become distracted and we realize we have been distracted, we find ourselves running back into the very life that Jesus has saved us from. When we believe in Jesus, he has saved us from so much of our life. But when we become distracted, that now becomes the apple of our eye and we forget what he has called us to do. We must not become distracted of what Jesus has saved us from. And if we claim to be followers of Jesus, but our life doesn't reflect that, if Jesus isn't the focus of our life, if he isn't the gaze of our life, then friends, we have fooled ourselves into simply making Jesus an aesthetic in our life. He becomes a part of our Instagram bio where it says Jesus or there's a Bible verse in our Instagram bio or our Facebook pages. But that's it. That's merely it. Our life doesn't reflect that of Jesus. We tell people we follow him, but there is no sign of our life that we truly follow him and that his love has encapsulated us. We must focus on Jesus so that we can obey his commands, but also show who he is to the world. A faith that has Jesus as simply an aesthetic is a dangerous faith because there is no faith at all. An aesthetic like faith shows hypocrisy in your life. What part of our lives are we not letting Jesus be the focus of? That we tell the world he is, but he's simply just a name. We must let him be the king of our lives. And so when Paul is writing here and he calls us to focus on the things above, simply put, friends, that is him telling us that we are called to focus on our relationship with God. You see, heaven is where we will experience the complete and total presence of God. We will live with God in heaven Sin will be absent and pain and suffering will be gone. The darkness of the world will not exist. And while we are on this side of heaven and we have experienced new life in Jesus, Jesus is bringing us into the presence of God through him. When we live with Jesus and we accept Jesus, the Holy Spirit, he sits inside of us. God with us. The presence of the Lord is now with us. And so we are called to live as if we are in the presence of the Lord. And so as we have died and our life is hidden with Christ in God, that means our life, in verse 3 here, is called to reflect Jesus Christ as God, obeying what he has called us to. And we should have our mind focused on our relationship with him. Our relationship should be the center of everything that we do. We should be viewing this world around us through a mindset of a Christ-centered relationship. And as we focus on Jesus and trust in his way for our life, then we find that we can rest in God's authority for our life. And that's our second point, that we rest in God's authority for our life. You see, as we've been talking about, we know that uh, through this new life, we have been bought at a price. You see, Jesus, is, Jesus did not come to this world to simply tell us that we are sinful people. We have known that. But Jesus came to this world to take our debt, to take the wrath of God and the judgment for our sins so that we can have new life with God through him. And as followers of Jesus, we are transformed through his work on the cross we have received grace from God and our lives are supposed to be completely transformed from that. When Jesus is the focus of our life, we can rest in obedience to God. We see God's word as the authority of our life. We see scripture as truth. And what God commands in his word, we don't take as a suggestion, but we take it as the rule of life because it is focused on what a heaven 
life, a heaven set life is. God's authority points us back to God's original design for who we are. And when we live with God's authority as our life, and we are resting in God's authority, trusting in God's authority, obeying his authority, we are bringing glory to him because we are reflecting a heaven-set mind and a heaven-set life. We are not trying to combat uh, God's word with the way we want to live life. We let Jesus be the king in our life. We let God rule our life. And instead of fighting his authority, we obey it. Even if it's difficult and hard, we trust in God's authority because we know that God is going to bring us to what is best for us. And that is his presence, friends. We are called to rest in God's presence. And a way we do that is by obeying his word for our life. You see, Jesus gives us a new citizenship in heaven. And Jesus' work on the cross cross, excuse me, is the only way we can receive that citizenship. Through Jesus and his his work on the cross, that is where we find soul-satisfying love. A soul-satisfying love only God can give us. And we can rest in that love, friends. I'm here to tell you that God wants us to experience that love, but we can only find it through the grace of Jesus. But if we have experienced the grace of Jesus in our lives, then our lives are to be transformed into the new creation that obeys his word. As citizens of heaven, as followers of Jesus, we rest in God's promises and his redeeming work. And part of the way we show that to the world around us, that we can exhibit God's love for us, that our minds can be set fully upon God and fully upon his word is by obeying it daily. The way we used to live before we knew God is over. Our life accredited to sin, our life that was found only in sin is over. We have experienced a resurrection inside of us. Our souls have been resurrected and sin no longer has power over us. And in such, we obey scripture because when we live by the way God has commanded us through his word, We are opposing sin in our life. Look in verse four with me. Verse four says, when Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Do you know what that's saying? It's not simply that Jesus has saved us and that we have new life in him, but it's that Jesus is our life. Jesus is the complete life that we experience And that Jesus has fully overthrown the power of sin that once ruled over us. Sin has, Jesus has put to death the sin and the weight that it bears on our lives, the price that it demands from us and completely removes that from us. And instead we find life from the darkness. We find hope, we find joy, we find love and comfort and peace, fear, anguish, despair, darkness is removed from us in our lives. So we are called to live in that. But friends, sometimes sin is a hard thing to get rid of. You see, we live in this time period of this, of the already not yet. And the already not yet is this theological uh, uh, phrase that tells us that we are already been saved. When we believe in Jesus our souls are already saved and written in the book of life. We are destined for heaven. But as we exist on this side of of heaven, as we exist in this world, as we are traveling through this world as sojourners, we are still struggling with sin for our flesh is at war with our spirit. And we are not fully glorified. And there is sin in my life that I have to fight daily. And friends, there is sin in your life as well that you must fight daily. But can I tell you that in order to fight this sin, friends, the key is to focus on Jesus, not on your sin. The key to abstaining from sin and running from sin, running from the power it has over you, is to focus on Jesus and his redeeming work in your life. It's to ask God that he would rescue you, that he 
would remove the sin, that in his power he defeats the sin that I struggle with, that you struggle with. That through God's power, we are being rescued from sin. You see, when we focus fully on abstaining from sin, our focus isn't on Jesus. Our focus is on our sin and on ourself. And that's a dangerous spot to be because we are now saying we have the power to defeat sin. Friends, we don't have that power, but God does. And as it says in verse four, that when Jesus Christ, who is our life, appears, and that we will appear with him in glory, that means the power of sin has no power over you. The shame of sin has no power over you. Give up the shame and give it to God. You see, because we as followers of Jesus are covered in his holy righteousness, friends. His beautiful, perfect righteousness. When we turn from our sin and we decide to follow God, we are covered in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Not a righteousness we could work for. Not a righteousness that we could attain by our own selves. And not a righteousness that we build up by our way of life. But instead, we are given the righteousness of God. And it is so much more powerful than anything else that exists. And anything else that could have power over us. Jesus has overthrown the power of sin and darkness in your life when you follow him. When you appear with him in glory, sin has no stake on you. So allow him to fight that battle. And as you feel sin coming and rising up in your life, creeping up on you, run to the Holy Spirit that rests with you. You see, the Holy Spirit, he wants to help you fight your battle with sin. So give it to the Holy Spirit. He will empower you to obey the commands of Scripture, and He will empower you to obedience, abstaining from sin. Pray that God gives you the strength in your life to follow His Word and obey Him. And friends, as followers of Jesus, we should be eager to follow the commands of God because God's commands are not a set of rules that reign over us to beat down on us, but instead, they are rules that give us freedom. They're a way of life that allows us to experience utter freedom from sin. And it's so much more beautiful than anything that this life could give us. There's no sin that could let you experience joy in the way that God's rule and God's reign in your life can, friends. You see, when we obey God's commands, we are pointing glory back to the Father. And we should be eager to do so in our spirits. We should be eager to bring glory to God in our life. And so we know that God's righteousness reigns over us, that God fully is our life, that Jesus is our life. And that we know when we focus on our relationship with Jesus, that we are focusing on the things of heaven because we are obeying the commands of God and we are following after Jesus every moment of our day. So friends, as we close out today, I want to encourage you to do these three things, to have a heavenly set mind, to put your focus on Jesus and to trust in him fully. And the first is to focus on Jesus' work on the cross. Realize that when Jesus died on the cross and was raised three days later, he set you free from sin. If you repent from your sin and believe in him, sin no longer has stake on your soul. But instead, we experience a fullness of life in him. We experience an everlasting love in our life. And second, when we are focused on Jesus, we can trust in his command and his rule for our life. You see, Jesus and God, scripture itself, the way God has revealed himself to us today, points us to a life that is reflected of a life in the presence of God. And so we must trust in his commands, even when they're difficult, because we know that it is pointing us to a fullness of life with God. It is pointing us to the presence of the Father. And we can rest in that presence. And the third thing for you all today to take away is that no matter how difficult the sin is in your life, to let go of that sin, to trust God to defeat sin in your life. 
You see, God is stronger than all things. There is none more mighty than God, and that includes the battle you are facing. And he is waiting there with the strength to defeat sin. So give it over to him. Don't let sin hold shame in your life and hold stake in your soul, but instead hand it over to a loving father who can remove that from you. And in doing so, hold you so tightly in his arms because we are adopted into his family that we feel the love and the freedom of life in Jesus Christ. I'm so grateful we got to look at Colossians 3 today and to do our first week in the study of Colossians 3. That we got to focus our minds and got to see what it means to have our minds set on the heavenly things, to have our minds set on a relationship with Jesus. So I pray that we all focus on Jesus every moment of our day. And we do that through prayer and obedience to his word. So let's pray. Father God, thank you so much that we have the amazing opportunity to rest in your word, that we have the amazing opportunity to rest in the life you have given us through your son, Jesus Christ, and that when we believe on him and we repent of our sin and turn towards him, that your Holy Spirit, God, takes part of our life, and that we can step side, we can live a step in step with the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray you give us the strength to trust in you, to follow your commands, Lord, And let us not be distracted by the ways of this world or the life that holds over us. But let us trust fully in you, God. We love you, God. We do ask all of this. We ask all of it in your son's holy name. Amen.